Hey guys, this is Dan. I want to look at how to format orchestra parts for printing today. I have a completed orchestra score here. It's ready to be printed off and given to my musicians. And there's just a couple things I want to do to get it ready for them. Since uh, rehearsal time is, is precious, I want to make sure that, that the format of parts that I give them is really clear, easy to use, understandable. And Dorico makes these things really pretty easy to accomplish. So let's take a look at some of them. Uh, I'm in the full score right now. I typically like to hide this at the top, either by clicking here or by using Control-6 because I like as much screen real estate as possible. For now, I'm just going to keep it open to help you walk through this process. So I'm in, uh, I'm in write mode right now, which I arrive at by Control-2. Uh, I've looked through my score and uh, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to switch to page view. Uh, that would be control alt one. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, check the, check the full score, make sure that the layout is pretty good. I almost never do anything to the full score uh, myself since it's really a working score. It's in house and it's just for reference since by the time I finish an arrangement, I, I pretty well know what it sounds like. So this is just for me to, this is just for me to kind of consult generally. Uh, the full score looks pretty good. Like I said, I don't really need to do much to that. Uh, I do use a couple different um, zooming buttons quite a bit. Z zooms in, X zooms out. I've also assigned Alt X to be page height, which is really helpful um, because when I'm looking at a score, perhaps I come to a, to a layout and it's, it looks like this or something and I wanna see it at a glance. I go Alt X and then X to zoom out once. And it's just kind of a nicely laid out centered view that I find really helpful, especially when I'm doing layout of parts. All right, I'm going to switch to a different layout. I could do that by going from the drop down, but uh, with Dorico, it's always helpful as much as possible to use keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to do that. Keyboard shortcut here is Shift Alt and brackets takes me to the next score, Alt X and X. Here's my lead sheet. The lead sheet also typically doesn't need a lot of work. I do see at the, at the bottom here that the, um, you know, the footer is probably is carried over from a previous file. So I'm going to need to change that. Dorico by default avoids collisions pretty well. I see this, uh, this rehearsal mark here is a little high, so I might, I might move that just a hair. Uh, for most of this work, you're actually going to be in engrave mode, which is control three. Engrave mode is where you, you don't add or delete notes or dynamics or chords or anything, but you do change the appearance of how they look on the page. You see that uh, here's my pages panel. When I select a page, you can also see it's pulling from a certain master page. Uh, page two and three are pulling from the default master page as they should. Page one is pulling from the first master page and I am in my default part master page set, not my full score master page set. I want to change this uh, footer at the bottom, but I'm not going to do it by editing the actual layout itself because it would only cha change it for this layout and I want to change it everywhere. That's the beauty of master pages. I'm going to, I'm going to double click on the first master page and I'm going to edit this, uh, this footer here. Uh, I've set up a little macro to give me the uh, copyright symbol. Y you could just copy and paste it from the character map. I'm going to save all this because I'm going to use it on my full score master page as well. That looks pretty good. You see that when I did that, it automatically updated this frame as well because these frames are linked. However, if I adjust perhaps the size of a frame, for example, it does not update. And so in order to make sure that my appearances here are identical, I'm going to copy from left to right. There we go. All right, we hit apply and then close. And you see that it's updated here. I'm going to go back to my full score. When I go back to my full score, 
You could see that because my full score is pulling from a different master page set, this here is not correct. So I also want to edit the first master page in my full score. Just double click here, control A and control V. I'll go ahead and make this part italics. Also, uh, I can move this down a bit, give myself some more room if I need it. And I'm going to want to copy from left to right, so it's the same on both sides. Hit apply and close. Now my full score looks the same as well. You know, for the full score, I think I'm actually going to center this. Control A and center. Yeah, I think that looks better. Apply and then close. There we go. Full score is good. Lead sheet. So a little bit of conflict here, perhaps. I guess it's not really too much of a problem. I'm going to switch to staff spacing. When I switch to staff spacing, you see that I have these little handles now where I can move my staves around however I want. I'm going to hold down shift, click and drag to draw a marquee. Now I could use alt arrow to move them down. But if I want to move a larger distance, I could go control alt arrow moves them by a bigger distance. Just want to kind of get that out of the way. So it's doesn't look like it's conflicting. That's pretty good. I routinely shift back to right mode control two because I want to see what it actually is going to look like on the page. Okay, that's the lead sheet. Next, well, this is actually a little close right here. Let me move these down a little bit. Now you see I can use my arrows to move back and forth between um, between handles. I can go left arrow to go to this page. Um, and I can do tab to go to these little guys here. That would come into play. That'll come into play later when we have multiple staves on one system. So tab and down there. Let's go into the next layout. This is the piano layout. Alt X and X. What the piano layout is conspicuously missing now, oh, I see there's a rest there I need to hide. Back to right mode, click on the rest. Uh, I've assigned remove rests to control shift R, so I'll go ahead and get rid of that rest. For this, for this piano layout, I also want to include uh, the lead sheet. So to do that, I want to go to setup mode. In setup mode, I have my windows hidden. Let me go ahead and show those. I want to select the piano layout, and I'm going to check the box for lead sheet. Now you see that the lead sheet is assigned to the piano layout, just as I, just as I want. Um, so that looks fine. Let's switch back to right mode. Um, if I switch to, oh, I'm going to rename this actually back to setup mode. Let's double click to rename this to piano score. All right, back to right mode. I'm going to switch back to my lead sheet a second. You see how I made these, 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 um, this lead line here to be small notes because I made a properties change. It, it did not automatically propagate to other layouts and I want to do that now. So I'm just going to select everything here and I've assigned propagate to control alt P. When I do control alt P and then I switch to my piano score layout, you see that it is now propagated those, uh, those smaller notes to this. And I think that looks better. A couple things I can do here before I make manual adjustments, I'm going to switch to layout options, control shift L. First thing I'm going to do now, this is on a per layout basis. So I want to make sure I have my correct layout selected, which I do. The default spacing here is four. You really don't want to go below three and a half typically because it really gets cramped, but let's see if I move it down a little bit, what happens? Let's hit apply. See that now I've gotten quite a bit more on the page. I like that. Well, I think it looks a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that. What are some other things that I might want to do here? I could select all of the chord symbols and hide them. Uh, if I wanted to, I could go control shift a to select 
but more across the line. Control Shift A again to go all the way. And then by opening up my properties panel, Control 8, which you'll use all the time, by the way, I could, uh, I could hide these chord symbols. That looks better, but to be honest, for a, for a piano score, I, I personally always like to have the chord symbols, so I'm just going to leave them on there. But you certainly could hide them if you wanted to. And because this is, a, this is on a per layout basis, it would not hide them in the lead sheet automatically. What are some other problems that we have that we, that we might want to fix? I can see right now that my lyrics are much too close to my piano score. So I'm going to go back to layout options. And now I'm going to go to vertical spacing. My first section in vertical spacing is ideal gaps. These work in global categories. You can see that this spacing issue falls into the category of what is the distance between staff to staff group. It's set to 8. I'm going to set it to 10 uh, and hit apply. Let's see what happens. I think that looks a lot better, so I'm going to keep it there. Um, now, you can see what happened here. Um, actually, while I'm at it, let me go ahead. I think the piano is a little close together as well. So I'm going to set this to, uh, say, 7 and 1 fourth. Let's hit Apply. I think that looks a little better. Of course, I have this massive problem here. Uh, this problem is vertical justification. I've set some values here, which work globally perhaps for other things, but in this case they don't. And this is justification. Justify distance between staves and systems when frame is at least 60% full. So when this music frame or any music frame reaches at least 60% full, if there's space remaining, Dorico is going to fill it out and spread things apart. Well, I don't really want it to do that in this case. So I'm going to set this value pretty high because I like the, the distance between my staves within a system to be fairly consistent. However, I am going to justify the, dis the distance between systems, uh, in this case, when it's, say, 70%. Let's hit Apply and see what that does. Now you can see Dorico says, OK, fine, I won't space them out. Of course, we do have um, really a pretty big amount of space left here. Um, I, I probably could make this happen through some manual adjustment, but instead of that, what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going to switch to engrave mode and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to make, I'm going to force this system into this frame. Now there's a couple different ways I could do this. The first would be to select an item at the beginning and then hold down control and select the final bar line. And then I could click this button, make into frame. Now, you certainly could do it this way. I actually prefer a different way, which I'll show you now. For starters, you want to turn on signposts. I've set that to be F10, um, and I've I've made a frame break here uh, at the beginning. The way that I've done that, uh, I'll show you. I just click on the beginning, and I go Shift F, and then I'm going to click here to make another frame break, and I'm going to go Shift F again. You see, it forced this this next this part here to go to the next frame. I'm going to click on this frame, and I'm going to click on Wait for next frame break. When I do that, Dorico says, "Okay." I'm going to force everything to the, into this music frame until I find the next frame break. So it's forced that to be on uh, on one frame. I go through the rest here. The rest looks pretty good. Uh, this here, I typically, um, if it's four or more measures, I'll actually change a hairpin to be um, a, a crescendo line. So I'm going to do that now. Let's uh, switch back to right mode. I actually could do it in engrave mode. I'll click on it. Let's go to gradual style and we'll select crescendo from the list. Uh, you also could do it actually without the without the dotted line. I'll go ahead and do that. Let's switch back to engrave mode. I think that piano layout is looking pretty good. I may take this this bit here, this last system, and I may move it down a little bit. This is where I was talking about um, I could move down like this, uh, the whole system, or if I hit tab, I could move individual, I could move individual measures uh, like this. I'll go back to here, move this down just a little bit. My 
my piano layout is ready. So let's move on to the next one. Here's my flute. I'm going to switch to graphic editing mode and I'll go ahead and hide the bottom here. I typically, in engrave mode, I typically don't need this bottom panel, so I'll go ahead and hide it. The other thing that I like about page height, you see that when I do that, it automatically resizes to be whatever the available the available area is, which I think is really handy. So here's my flute score. The single most important thing about laying out parts is page turns or the lack of them. If I were to print this out right now, uh, by default it would print duplex, it would print double-sided, and the player would have a page turn right here. I clearly don't want that. My other option is to print single-sided. Of course, if I print single-sided, I have to figure out what I do with this initial page, if anything, and it also doesn't allow me to hole punch. And if my players are hole punching, and these two pages are facing one another, then how are they going to know what the song is until they open up to it? It's going to be a blank page. So my way around that is to create a title page, which I've already done uh, here, but I'm going to delete it and uh, so I can show you how I do it from, uh, from the beginning. So I have, a, I have a first master page for page one, and I have a default master page for all pages following, but I want to create a new kind of master page within my part master page set. I'm going to call it title. I'm not going to base it on any previously existing one, and it's going to be a custom master page. I'll hit OK. Now you see that it's created, and I'll double click on it. It's entirely blank. I'm going to add a very simple thing to it. You could, of course, make these quite beautiful, but I'm going to make it very utilitarian. I'm going to click on my frames editor, and I'm going to click to add a text frame. When I do this, here's the guy. You don't have to click right on the edge. You could click outside of it and hold down and drag. When you do that, just click to drag a big old box. Let's move it up to the top, I guess. That's pretty good. I'm going to double click in the box to edit this. Now, if I were setting up a template, I would probably go project title. Oops. And I would use a token. Because then any time that I changed my project title in a new file, it would automatically put the correct title in there. Since this is a, a previously existing file, and I'm only going to really be doing it to this file, I'm just going to put in the title. Uh, let's see. It is um, arranged by me. And up here, the top, I'll put... This is where I am definitely going to use a token. Layout name. Um, surrounded by the amper, um, by the little at symbol and the curly brackets. I'll select everything. I'm going to align it to the right. I'm going to make my, make my title nice and big. Uh, bigger. Let's add some more space here. Let's make this guy a little bigger. Um, and let's, by clicking on this, let's open up the bottom panel. I'm going to set the vertical alignment to top. Copy from left to right, hit apply, and close. Now you don't see it anywhere yet because none of the pages are actually using that title page. But let's go ahead and assign page one. Uh, to use this uh, this master page. So I'm going to right click on page one and I'm going to insert a master page change. I've assigned it to these shortcuts. You could do that if you wanted to, whenever you wanted. From page one, starting at page one, I'm going to use the master page called title, which I've created. And I only want to do it for the current page. I'm going to hit OK. When I do that, you see that there's now a green bar across the top indicating, and this is very important, that it is a master page change only for page one. Page two now is picking up the first master page, and now page three is picking up the default master page. So essentially, I just added a title page to this. I did not use insert page, because when you do that, 
it'll create a page override and you cannot apply then a master page. You have to make it from scratch. So the rule of thumb with master pages is if you're going to be doing something a lot and you want a consistent layout, then you need to make a master page for it and assign it. Okay, there's really not a lot left to do to this. If I wanted to, I could maybe, um, using my graphics tool, I could maybe click here on the bar line and I could go shift F to add a frame break. I do like to space things out a good bit. I like the way that looks. I am going to adjust a little bit of this, um, a little bit of this spacing here, just a hair to make it nice and even. That looks pretty good. And on here, um, these are spaced close together. I could space them. Another trick I actually like to do, because you remember that Dorico will fill once a music frame is a certain percentage full. I've told it to fill that frame by justifying. So I'm going to drag the frame up until it kind of snaps to fill it. Uh, like this. So what that does is it gives me a, something that's nicely evenly spaced without having to do it manually. It's kind of a wash, to be honest. Either way is pretty fast. Also, you see my rehearsal mark is conflicting with my header, so I'm going to drag it down. Let's switch to right mode, and I'm going to switch off frames, and let's take a look. There we go. This is spaced really nicely. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and uh, look at a couple others, because there may be some other scenarios of things we'd want to do. Okay, here's a case where I think we could get this all on one page. Uh, of course, it's just fine to have this, but if you could have it on one page, that's, of course, even better. The trick here, which you'll actually find yourself using a lot, is to switch to note spacing and just try to bump it down and see what happens. Let's hit apply. Bingo. Without any fuss or mess on my part, Dorico automatically fit this guy beautifully into one page, so I don't have to do any more work for this. And notice, because I'm in layout options, this is applying only to the ones that are highlighted. If I select others, different values pop up. But I was in oboe, so I changed my default spacing. If I select multiples, you'll see that it says, hey, you've got different values here. In general, you don't have to worry about this because whatever layout you're on currently is going to be the layout that is highlighted that you're working on. Let's look at a couple other examples here. I could probably do the same thing here, maybe. Let's, oops, let's give it a shot. Okay, that one didn't work. It didn't go, it tried. I could maybe bump it down one more time. I would never go below, yeah, it still doesn't work. So I would never go below three and a half. I feel like it really starts to look too squished. You can see here it already, it's just a little compacted. So I'm gonna return to, uh, to four since I'm going to go to another page anyways. And let's just go ahead and put it back like it is. Switch to engrave mode. Now my title page is already created. It's already there. So I'm not going to have to create it again. Just right click here. Insert a master page change. Use the title page on the current page only. And you see that, of course, it puts in the correct layout name where that token was. And um, since I have the space, I will go ahead and click here and add a frame break. Go ahead and bump this to the next page. I'm going to move this frame up until it right about there. Yep. Now, of course, you notice when I move this frame up, you see it creates an override on this page. So you want to make sure you wait to move these up until you've added your title page. Um, because page overrides can just kind of change things. Of course, you could always, if you wanted to, you could right click and remove the page overrides on that page or all of them. If you did that, it would go back to what it was. This page is looking, or this layout's looking good. Let's go on to the horn. It's, to be honest, it's probably the same deal. I'm going to want to uh, add a master page change, title master page on the current page only. And then I will also, uh, I'm on frames right now. I'll also go here and add a frame break to just kind of space things out nicely. I think I may adjust some of the note spacing here so it's evenly laid out. The reason why it's 
why the spacing is has a little bit of a discrepancy is because of the rehearsal marks. And I'm looking forward to the time when rehearsal marks are spaced a little better. I'll just go ahead and, um, oops, I'll just go ahead and grab here and uh, move it down manually. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Trumpet in B flat, this one's no problem. This one is only a, a single page. So in this case, I am actually going to, um, I'll just drag up the frame to go ahead and justify it. Beautiful. Same thing with uh, trumpet two. Okay, I'm actually inserting here um, another little test case from a different file because there's two other sort of scenarios that I wanted to cover for you that may happen that are happening here that are not happening elsewhere. And I wanna make sure that you have some strategies to deal with those. So the, the first and obvious thing that you might see here is that we have three pages. So adding a title page is not necessarily going to help. And in fact, I don't really need to do that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna uh, actually going to set a system break quite a bit higher. I'm going to set it right here. Uh, and, oops, I'm sorry, not a system break, but a frame break. I'm going to set a frame break here. It's actually going to be quite a bit higher. And so this is going to be the actual first page that they see, not a title page. These pages will then be open. Uh, the other thing um, that you might run into, you may say, well, perhaps there's no good place to to turn a page so let me undo that. What if you actually, what if your your actual place to, to turn the page, if you had maybe a multi-bar rest, what if that were all the way up here? If you create a frame break, you see that there's quite a bit of space left. That's actually totally fine because the principle of page turns is that it's better to have more page turns that are actually easier to use um, than to have fewer and try to make that be some kind of reason for having fewer um, and make it difficult for the player. So in a case like that, now this is not where I'd put a page turn, but I'm just showing you a scenario hypothetically uh, to say if you had three pages and you and you had to find a good place to turn, what if you wanted to turn here? I would actually move um, the frame up here. I'd resize it in such a way that it was helpful. Then I'm gonna switch to um, a text frame and I'm gonna add a text frame here. And I'm going to say this page, this space left blank to facilitate the page turn. I'm going to write justify it. So again, if you had a multi-bar rest here and this were really the best place to split it, it would be acceptable for you to, um, for you to do it like this. Uh, that's totally fine. A player would not be thrown by seeing that. They would actually be very appreciative of something like that. Again, to be clear, I would not do it here because it's not a good spot. I'm just trying to show you a case of where you might want to do that. I'll go ahead and undo these things in a little bit. Um, let's look at some of the other, um, other pro another problem in the file here. I have no idea why this happened. Oh, it's because these are all set. If you want to undo some spacing that you had set previously, these are red because they've been modified. You could hold down shift, click a marquee around them, and you could just hit delete. So again, anytime you make an adjustment on something, um, it is gonna be red, you can click on that, to, you can select it and just hit delete and it'll return to what it was. Now let's look at these examples here. It's really important that nothing moves outside the margin. And at present, Dorico does not automatically avoid these things. So in a case like this, uh, you'd wanna find some way of making these, of re redistributing the, what we call the casting off or the way that the measures are distributed. So I'm just gonna add a system break here, Shift S. And you see that that moved it down and just made it appear a lot better. Also in engrave mode, uh, you sometimes need to move things around. And in engrave mode, you can indeed move things around manually. Trombone one literally needs nothing done to it. It's, it's fine. Trombone two, the reason for this um, is here. If you go back to layout uh, options, under note spacing, Dorco right now is instructed to only justify the final system in the flow when it's at least 50% full. This is not 50% full, so it's not justifying it. I, I never really like to see partial measures, so I always uncheck this box. I'm not sure how it got checked. Probably just a leftover from a file. I'll hit apply. 
When I do that, you'll see that it really stretches out this last measure. If that bothered me, I could put in some system breaks, which I it doesn't really bother me, but I could maybe go right here, click on that, Shift S to add a system break, maybe here and Shift S. Let's go back and turn on signposts. You'll see that it's, it's showing me where I've manually added system breaks. I guess I might do that. It just kind of spreads out that last page a little bit more. Uh, tuba, yeah, same same deal. Again, in the files I typically have, this is um, this is automatically turned off. So I'm not really sure I need to do. Yeah, I don't know. It's a, I guess it's a question of how how nice you want it to look, how symmetrical, and whether you feel are, are feeling lazy or not. I'll drag up this frame from the bottom. I do like scores to look beautiful. I feel like when I hand a score to a player and it's beautifully formatted, cleanly laid out, I think it shows respect for the player. Uh, I think it also shows the player that that I care very much about this arrangement. I see here something I want to change. These, these dynamics uh, actually went to group, so I'm going to click and hold them down. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say group dynamics so that they're aligned across. You know, you can understand why it wasn't, why it wasn't aligned, because it, it kind of clung to the staff, but anytime I'm going a hairpin opening to a dynamic, uh, I want those to align. So those are aligned now. So I guess that means I will move my, um, I'll kind of move things a little bit to give it a little bit of space so it's not, not too close. Let's take a look. Um, and there, that's tuba is good. Um, violin, this is going to be the same the same deal as the um, as the others. I'm going to want to add a master page, title master page on the current page only. You can see when you have the master page set up, it goes pretty quick, pretty quickly. And actually, you can automate this somewhat with a macro. I've I've tried it before. Um, it doesn't doesn't work too badly. This you might be able to get on a single page. We can let's give it a try. Let's let's bump it down to three and a half. That's as small as I would go. Let's apply and close. Boom, it worked. This is maybe a little tight, but it's perfectly readable. And I just reduced this to one page, so we're going to stay with this. Viola is already set to one page. I really don't need to do anything to it. Cello. I'm definitely going to need to add a title page there. It's looking good. I will uh, I will go ahead and move this down a little bit. And double base. Same deal here. Um, what you what you can actually do if you want is um, um, I'll put this back to where it was. You can actually select all of these and then you could untick this option right here and hit apply. Do that once and then it's done. Nothing more to do. Uh, this one looks fine. I will go ahead and move this shift to S system break to bump that down to the next double base is good. And now I'm back to my full score. I'll just take a quick look. Actually, I'm going to justify these staves. I might as well. So with the full score selected, I'm going to go to vertical spacing, vertical justification, and I'm going to justify the distance between the staves and the systems when the frame is at least 50% full. Justify staves when frame with single system is above this threshold. So turn that on, hit apply. When we do that, you see that Dorico now nicely spaces out everything using all of the available space so that every page is filled. It gives me a nice, consistent, clean look, which I like. All right, that's a little overview of how to format orchestra parts in Dorico. hope you find it helpful.